I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 18th of November, 2022. This is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we are at Leon Stadium and we are watching the Leones play uh, Chinandega in the beginning of the season. And we are here on Tuesday and we lost pretty badly to uh, Rivas, but we're playing Chinandega today and we are hopeful that things are going to go better. It has been a very busy day. I had a lot of work to do. I'm going to do very little of the video from here because it is super loud. I'm hoping that you guys can hear me all right because there's just a lot. I mean, obviously, we're in the VIP box here and uh, difficult to uh, record, but I thought it'd be nice to get something different for y'all because so often I'm recording in the same places and everybody complains that when I go out and go to cool places like this that I don't do any recording, so I'm gonna try to get this for you as much as possible. I got some good footage for you throughout the day. We're gonna show that. I'm gonna do the rest of the recording from somewhere where you can hear me. Thanks for joining me. Let's get to it. Okay, so we started off the day with a lot of work to do. I was backlogged just starting the day and then many things popped up that had to be done during the day. So I went from just a basically busy Friday to kind of sheer panic to get things done. So I jumped into the office first thing this morning after getting very little sleep, quite a bit less than three hours, all because of dogs. And uh, I had to get right into the office and get to work. Paul and Dominica actually started the day getting summoned by the police to the beach to deal with some emergency at the hotel that also required the hotel manager. So all of them were racing to get there and get things coordinated and to get our lawyer there and representatives and all kinds of stuff because you don't meet with the police without your lawyer because that's just how life works. My gosh, what a way to start the day. So I was actually in the office by about 7, 7.30, having gotten up at 6 to walk the dogs after going to bed at about 3.30. And uh, they were out to run down to the beach and deal with that disaster. That disaster turned out to be a summons because the police wanted to sit them down along with everyone else in town and simply say, someone was stealing some trees from someplace really far away and we should keep our eyes out for it. That could have been an email. And... Could have been just a stop by with a flyer, or could have been we're going to have a meeting this afternoon, or just not told us because I don't know what we're supposed to do about seeing people with trees from another island far away. I really don't know what we're supposed to do with that information or why we were summoned. That was the start of the day. So my day, working like crazy until early afternoon, uh, Paul, Ron, and I jumped in the car and drove up to La Paz Centro, which is the kind of the second city or one of the two satellite cities of Leon. But we were looking, so what we're doing is we're going out to look at a finca, which a finca is hard to describe because these words do not map exactly to English. You can think of a finca a little bit like a farm, but in some cases you can think of it as a ranch. It kind of goes back and forth. In this case, we thought we were going to look at a farm, but we were actually going to look at a ranch. Because finca can be used for just about anything, it tends to cross over. So that leads to a little bit of confusion, but 3,000 acre ranch uh, in northern La Paz Centro. So we went out to La Paz Centro, turned north and went along the lake, could just barely see it. That's Lago Managua, not Lago Nicaragua. This is the northern lake. Uh, and skirted, went past uh, the Porto. Oh, no, I'm not sure. I think it's the Porto Mombatumbo. Uh, but we went right past the volcano Mombatumbo. It's a beautiful region. And uh, we're actually slightly closer on the very north side of La Paz Centro. So we were uh, pretty close to Malpaisio, which one of my viewers has asked me uh, to go check out and do videos around town and where I stopped on the bus that one time with Liesl when we had an emergency. So we know that village a little bit, but only a little bit because it's a bus stop and because someone on the channel has mentioned it. I've not had a chance to go up there and film because it is a really hefty drive. It's nearly an hour away from here. So in order for me to do that, I got to take like a whole day and I totally intend to do that, but it's a bit of work that needs to be done. And I think what I need to do is combine that with a trip going up to Matagalpa at some point, because I can stop, spend a couple hours filming, get in the car and continue on to Matagalpa or Esteli or Hinotega. All of those are down that road. But anyway, so that is the location we are heading to, but I'm not showing it while I talk because as I look through the footage, first of all, I filmed everything in HDR and the 4K iPhone 13. And I'm like, this is absolutely gorgeous. I want you guys to really enjoy seeing the ranch. Now, the ranch was kind of a bust. We went and looked at it. It had 100 head of cattle who looked very healthy, actually, even though they're in, uh, they must roam normally and just weren't at the time. And uh, uh, it was a beautiful day, absolutely gorgeous. A little bit warm, but it was gorgeous. Great clouds and contrast in the sky. And I don't have any kind of polarizing filter for the iPhone. So what you're seeing is straight from the camera. None of this is edited in any way. There's no color correction. This is just the iPhone 13 shooting there on the farm. 
Uh, and uh, we got to see some of the cows. We got to go see some of the fields. Um, it's surrounded by volcanoes. Unfortunately, a big portion of the ranch is actually on the side of a volcano, which, which is not as valuable as being, you know, usable. Um, and it, uh, uh, but it was, it was just a beautiful experience. I didn't film any of the farmhouse. It was uh, a large, um, kind of falling down hundred year old farmhouse. It was completely usable, but nothing of interest particularly. Uh, and it wasn't what we were there to look at. So, uh, didn't grab that, but I wanted you guys to be able to enjoy what I filmed. So I'm telling you about it now. There's nothing really more to tell. The one, the fields that you do see are mani or cacahuate in, in uh, formal Spanish, which is peanuts in English. Uh, so it's mostly you're going to see cattle and peanuts uh, growing there on the farm and all the volcanoes. It was just such a gorgeous day. I want you to enjoy it. So I'm going to play some music and give you just this really quick view of the ranch. And when we're done with that, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the rest of the day. Wasn't that beautiful? It's Nicaragua has so much natural beauty, and these are the things that people don't tend to think about very much. So it's one of the reasons I really want to show it. And I am scheduled very soft, uh, tentatively, but in a few days uh, from now, so in about four days, uh, I'm supposed to go look at some more fincas uh, with the same group, and I'm going to try to take the camera, of course, and get some more footage for you guys because some of this just wild Nicaragua is amazing. Um, not that there aren't beautiful areas like this in just about anywhere, but it's hard to envision what does a field, a farm, a ranch, an open area, the countryside in any place look like. Those are things that are actually pretty hard to find out because no one ever goes to those places. If you land in a country and drive across it, of course you drive through all that country scenery and you get a really good feel for it. And it's one of the reasons I love to travel because there's so much you can't show on video or, or it's just very difficult to. But here on the channel, because we do so much, we live here, we're always out and about, there's an opportunity to show you guys a lot of stuff that no, most people just have a hard time getting to see, not that any of it's secret. Uh, and so, uh, I think stuff like this, getting to see what an open, large ranch area in a part of the country that no one ever films in is like, is really interesting. It's very informational, because if you're someone who's looking at moving to Nicaragua, most of you are going to be looking at beaches or city. I'm not really sure which is more common. I think the beaches win, but the city is pretty big. Uh, and, and mostly it's a small city crowd. It's just the nature of Nicaragua. If you're looking for a giant city, you're going to be looking at Panama and, and Guatemala primarily and uh, possibly Costa Rica. You can make do in El Salvador or Honduras, but certainly not Nicaragua and Belize uh, as there are simply no really large cities in either one. And Managua at least is kind of big. It's bigger than all of Belize combined. It's still not that big. Uh, and when you're looking at the Leones, the Granadas, these are small cities, but this is what you generally think of as Nicaragua. We just have it programmed. This is what Nicaragua is like. But Nicaragua has so much 
beyond the beaches and beyond the cities. Uh, and, and the majority of Nicaragua is jungle and countryside with volcanoes all over the place and so much interior lake waterfronts. And most people think only of Lago Nicaragua and only of a few very isolated spots along the lake. Whereas Lago Managua, we normally think of only as a waterway in Managua and forget that it is a really large lake with ports and water frontage all over the north part of the country. And there's just, there's just a lot of interesting stuff out in Nicaragua to see, so I'm really glad I got to bring that to you today. After going to see the Finca, it just came back, dropped me off. I worked for like another hour uh, to hour and a half to get um, some videos uploaded because I was absolutely desperate to get enough done so that Valentina would have uh, the videos up to work on the thumbnails because uh, I was uploading like most of this week's videos all during this window. Uh, so it was a little bit rushed, but got that done. Um, Alan and Anna came and picked me up and we headed to Valenti's because we are getting dinner. Everyone else is just tired and feels like staying home and doing their own thing. So just the three of us ended up going out. Uh, we went to Valenti's and got dinner about uh, 4.45-ish, I think. Uh, we ended up at Valenti's, got some pizza, got some beers, chilled for a little bit. Anna's food took so long, we actually just got it to go. Alan and I ate there and we're done eating and waiting until her food came. This seems to be a new trend happening in Leon a lot. I don't know what's going on. But for the last two months, it seems really consistent that when we go with more than two people, the food comes out sometimes so far apart that people are done and ready to leave before the other people even receive their food. And of course, it's always the wrong order. Like if you're gonna bring out food late, it should be mine. I'm the person, I mean, no one knows this, right? But I'm the person who can always wait for food. I don't get hangry and I don't get, um, I don't get low blood sugar. I don't have any diabetic tendencies whatsoever. So if, oh, I had to wait three hours for my meal, I might be hungry, but it's not causing any problems, right? I may be thirsty, get me water, but that's about it. Nothing else is really important. And I eat incredibly fast. And it doesn't matter if you bring my food out early or late, I'm still gonna eat fast, that's who I am. And so you might as well bring it last. This is something I always tried to teach Dominica our entire lives together, like always serve everyone else first because no matter when I get served, I will always be the first one done. So the last thing I wanna do is be eating first. I wanna be the one where it makes sense that I'm rushing. It's just how I eat. And so that's, I, so always bring mine last, right? And of course, almost always mine comes out first. And it's like, why, why was I the first one served? Uh, but we got dinner and then we headed off to the baseball game where we shot the intro. We got to the VIP box. We didn't buy tickets ahead of time. And because we didn't, they actually didn't know anyone was coming and it was locked up and dark. But we know where to go. We know who the people are. We just went up, knocked on the, on the door and they came and unlocked it. And they're like, oh, you wanna use the VIP? We're like, yes. So they opened it up for us, kicked on the air conditioning, turned on the lights fired up the coolers, I'm sure the beer was already ice cold, and uh, we had our pick of any seats, obviously, uh, and so it was just the three of us in the VIP, which is pretty cool. Uh, I got some footage of the game, I got some footage of things going on, the, the mascot, the Lion of Leon, came up to the booth and took some videos with uh, Alan and Anna, I've got a short of that, I couldn't, I can't get shorts and regular video at the same time, until I get that GoPro 11, coming up in just a month because it should be waiting for me when I get to my dad's in New York, which should be somewhere around December 16th. We should be in Houston on the 15th. I don't know what day we're getting to New York, but it's really close after we arrive in Houston on the 15th. Uh, that I'll explain all of our travel plans in an upcoming video very soon. Not that it matters very much, but late December, I will be filming in New York and Texas for a couple of weeks all with different cameras, because none of the cameras I use here, except for obviously my phone, which I'm talking on, will be going with me to uh, the United States, because, and not even my laptop is supposed to be going to the United States. We go north with essentially nothing, and we purchase everything that we're going to use and travel with, cameras, laptops, all that stuff, new while we're up there. Uh, it's just, that's, that's our opportunity to do that, and so we don't wanna be shipping things we don't need unnecessarily. So. Hopefully by then I'll be able to do shorts and full videos at the same time, which I will love. A lot of people think that's a silly feature for me. The open gate concept, I don't know why it's called that, is phenomenal. And that is probably my number two feature on the GoPro 11 that I'm looking forward to. Number one is that it moves to HDR, which no one's gonna notice, but because I do HDR footage regularly like this, uh, it is uh, just handy for me to have a unified workflow and not having to convert different cameras back and forth when I'm uh, when I'm doing mixed HDR. Uh, so, but those two things, man, that's gonna be great. But I didn't have that, so I only got some of the video for this, 
um, on on for this channel, but go or this channel for the, this format. But go look at the shorts. I got several videos from the VIP in the shorts as well. We lost the game. It did not go well. It was six to two, but at least it was better than the uh, than the Rivas game on Tuesday. But we are still in last place in the league with zero wins. This is a very depressing week for baseball fans here in Leon. But we did have a really nice time. We had some Chinandega fans come up about halfway through the game and and join the VIP. So we did have some people. Of really big interest, though, this had never occurred to us. We did bring in our leftovers from Valenti's, but it didn't occur to us that you could order food into the VIP. But of course you can. The VIP does not provide food, nor does the stadium. I also made a short about this. Uh, it cost about $7. It's 250 cord to get into the VIP. It's air conditioned. They give you seats. They give you the box. You've got glass. It's nice. You got a TV. You can turn on and watch the game there too, which is mostly for the commentary and the, and the live score. And um, it's, it's very chill. And if you want food, you just go out into the stadium and get like the popcorn people or the people with candy or uh, cotton candy, that kind of stuff. They're wandering around. But if you want real food, hot food, you go the other direction. And all you do from the VIP box, you go down the stairs because you go upstairs to get into the VIP. The stairs empty directly into the food vendors outside the stadium. Now, they don't work for the stadium, so you're free to do anything you want. You can bring in food like we did because we had leftovers we just brought with us. Anna actually ate her food at the stadium because it came out so late. We didn't want to be completely late for the game. And we were there plenty of time. Uh, but there's also like fried chicken and hamburgers and stuff. Those are always there, even when the game is super slow, like it was today. The, I mean, the VIP was empty. Uh, but when it gets really busy, that those two or three vendors can turn into 40 or 50 vendors. And then the variety of food goes way up because like we couldn't get hot dogs today, but most days you'd be able to get hot dogs. And definitely by the finals, you can get anything. Uh, but you don't, they're not part of the stadium. So you do not have to order from them. You don't have to eat with them. You don't have to feel badly that you're bringing in food or anything like that. But what we didn't think of, but the people who ran the box did and the Chinandega fans figured out that of course, Ugo and Pedidos Ja, which are our delivery services, think Uber Eats and DoorDash, uh, will deliver directly to the VIP. So you can just go to the VIP, order your beers, sit down and relax, pull up your phone, look through the menus of all the restaurants in town and order away. And they will deliver not just to the stadium, they will come into the VIP to give it to you. What a great idea. That's what we are doing from now on. That is amazing. That makes the VIP so much more fun because currently we're always like, where we want to go to dinner? What are we going to do? And then we go get food and, it, and it's early because we want to get to the game around five because that's when the box opens. And, and it makes it that it's like, oh, we're going to eat at four or we have to wait till after the game. We're really hungry. And the food at the game for some people works out. Like Paul really likes the hamburgers and that's fine. But for those of us who either don't eat the food from the game or can't get anything because we're vegetarian, it's really important that we have some other source of food. And this solves that. It is going to be so nice. And then everyone can get something different. That's the, that's the other great thing is we don't have to get the same thing like we normally do. It's going to solve a lot of, of complications with going to the games, and we're going to enjoy it a lot more going forward. So that was our evening there. For once the game was over, uh, packed up, I walked back to the house, uh, got to work, did a, a bit more on videos, managed to get like three more videos. My other channel, Sam IT, which if you look at my main page, youtube.com slash Scott Allen Miller vlog, scroll down, there is a... Uh, a Several of my other channels are listed, and one of them is Sam IT. That is actually my main channel. This is my secondary channel. That's my work channel, um, and I've been posting there for about seven years. It has more followers than this channel. Uh, it gets some busier uh, videos. It also gets a lot slower, um, and I'm trying. I, I lost a lot of momentum on that during COVID, and I'm trying to get back into that with regularity, and right now that's starting to happen, and I'm feeling really good about it. So that is underway and I did a lot of work on that tonight because I'm trying to get that one booked ahead because it isn't telling my story of my day. So there's no, like I don't have to time it within a few days for it to make sense. So I did a lot of work on that tonight. That was my day. I hope you enjoyed getting to see more of Nicaragua than you normally get to see. So it's a bit of a different look into what life is like here, what our real days are like. And I'm gonna try really hard to get out more often and get more stuff like this. I love having a great place to record. I love being able to just walk around the city and show you guys where I live. Um, or places that I'm visiting, but it's also really cool when we are able to get out and show you like things that we're doing and activities and, and just what life is like around the country because it really is different than you are going to picture. Everywhere is different than what you picture of a place and getting to see what life is like is pretty meaningful. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe, leave your comments below, ask any questions that you have. Let me know what you think about baseball, 
Are you thinking about moving to Nicaragua and maybe you want to look in the countryside? Are you thinking about a farm or someplace where you can grow your own vegetables? Maybe you want to actually have a working farm and produce food for something, or you just want to live out in the country and have lots of open space. I know one of my viewers does want to do that, retire out into the country and have a different kind of lifestyle. If you'd like to support the channel, you can. Just buy me a coffee. I'm doing a good job, I think, in general. I'm putting up this link down below, and uh, that, will, that will make it easy for you to you when you send me coffee that comes directly to me i get that right away straight from them there's no like there's no like mechanism in between it works really well and of course if you could share this on social media and get the word out to others who may be interested in just seeing what nicaragua is like or maybe actually learning about someplace they may want to move or vacation that would be fantastic thanks for joining me i will see all of you tomorrow